Antonio starts right now. A Von Ormy patrol officer in the hospital after getting trapped in her vehicle. We have the latest details. A high school party in El Paso was shut down after someone with a gun showed up. We'll tell you if anyone was injured. And back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Yesterday could just be the start of a new heat wave. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday. It is July 9th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Yesterday, did you make it out and about? I did. What did you do? Um, I had to, you know, do some yard work. You did the yard work? Well, today and tomorrow, um, my neighborhood's having the branch pickup or the, the brush pickup. Oh. So cutting, trimming branches. So you're out about what is your secret to beat the heat? I really, the heat beats me every time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We're undefeated over here, Sarah. <laughs> it's a losing battle, but everything is before noon. Everything's before noon, all right. But yeah. even from like 11 to 12, you're just like, Oh boy. That's a good that's a good rule of thumb there, Sarah, because this afternoon we're once again going to see the triple digits. Heat index values are going to be anywhere from 105 to 108 this afternoon. So yeah, we're just starting the heat wave uh, of uh, the summer, the second heat wave of the summer. 78 degrees outside right now. We do have some of these morning clouds as we typically do. At New Braunfels, it's cloudy in 77, 76 in Seguin and cloudy. Clear though in Pleasanton in 77. Looking at today's forecast, temperatures are going to rebound really quickly. Here's that uh, before noon forecast. So until about noon it'll be in the 80s so get some yard work done early this morning but then in the afternoon 101 for the high winds from the south today at 5 to 15 so at least there will be a bit of a breeze now coming up in the forecast i'm going to be honest with you it's going to be hard for us to see this weather pattern break in the foreseeable future details on how hot we'll get coming up in just a bit max Thank you, Sarah. A Von Ormy patrol officer in the hospital after a terrifying crash ended with her having to get cut out of her vehicle. So take a look. This was the scene. The officer actually on her way responding to a crash. Then she became involved in a wreck herself. Now, this all unfolding the intersection of I-35 South Frontage Road at 1604. You can actually see the patrol unit flipped on the side. Now, she was cut out of the vehicle, taken to the hospital for injuries. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say she was alert. She was responding at the time being taken out of the vehicle. The situation did temporarily cause traffic delays yesterday in the area, but that has since been cleared. Police in El Paso looking for a gunman who opened fire at a party last night and injured six people. El Paso police say the shooting happened near the El Paso Country Club. Witnesses say the gunman targeted a high school party. None of the injuries are considered to be life threatening and so far no one is in custody. And Latinos in Texas now make up the largest share of the state's population, and Bear County has the highest Hispanic population in Texas. Maria Juarez tells us what this new data means for our local lawmakers. I'm not surprised. It was just a matter of time. Since 2000, the Hispanic population has doubled to nearly 12 million Hispanic Texans. This is something that, you know, many demographers predicted over time. Monica Cruz from the Texas Demographic Center says that trend is set to continue. Demographers predict there to be 20 million Hispanic Texans by 2050. Graciela Sanchez from the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center hopes lawmakers will take this data seriously. And, and I hope that our leadership takes advantage of using those, uh, that information and then trying to create policies and budgeting that will support our community. A chunk of the growth comes from Hispanics moving from other states to Texas. Another piece of growth comes from birth rates. We've experienced declines in birth rates among all racial ethnic groups um, over the past decade, but still Hispanics have higher birth rates than the other racial ethnic groups, which has been, you know, a, a part of the driver. Nearly half of Hispanic Texans live in Dallas, Harris, El Paso, Hidalgo counties, and of course, Bear County. San Antonio is the only city that actually has a majority of the Hispanic population where um, now stand at about 64% of the city's population. Census data also revealed the median income for Hispanic Texans is $55,000, compared to non-white Texans earning 81,000. Sanchez hopes future policy will create a more equitable Texas. And so how do we improve the education of our community? How do we Im improve the health of our community? The 
how do we improve just the lived experience. If you're looking to connect with Latino culture, come to the Esperanza Center. They have art, speakers, even books, all from Latino authors and artists. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Residents in Brownsville are divided over SpaceX facilities, so remnants of April's launch are still scattered around Brownsville, which is causing an environmental impact. So debris from the launch left sent, left craters and crops near the site were scorched. The area is a critical nesting ground for threatened and endangered wildlife. Several environmental groups are suing the Federal Aviation Administration to take stricter oversight of the private space company's launch plans. It is in the middle of a wildlife refuge in state park lands, um, and you know this this area isn't really meant to be disturbed. That's kind of the point of, the, of protecting these areas um, is to protect them for the wildlife and for public enjoyment as well. However, on the other side, many community members are happy to see an economic boom from tourists wanting to see Elon Musk's starbase. I guarantee you, any other community in this country would love to have SpaceX launching in their backyard because of what it would mean from an economic development standpoint, from an educational standpoint, from a tourism standpoint. Brownsville is one of the poorest counties in the state, but the median home price has more than doubled since SpaceX broke ground in 2014. All right, time now, 6.06, 78 degrees. There's no winner, including myself, after well, the Powerball. You know Actually, I won $8, so. So you are a winner. I'm a little bit How of a winner. How many more tickets can you buy with $8? I think like three. Okay. Three more? Three more? I don't know. So we'll tell you how much that new jackpot is and what you might, and you might want to buy a ticket after hearing this number. You know, Mike Osage always says such a good point. I love how for some people it's like, oh, well now that it's over 600 million, I'll buy one. But you have one. What's your line of demarcation? 100, 100 million. All right, so obviously it is the summertime. Students, some students at least, looking towards the new school year. But here's the thing, that in between time during the summer, a lot of kids, they lose a lot of education time. We're gonna break it down and some easy ways to stay sharp. Oh boy, Sarah Spivey, it is humid today at 78 degrees this morning, only at 6.07. What is our heat index going to be later today? Sarah Spivey, let us know in just a bit. All right, in a little less than a month and a half, students headed back to school. But if you're not careful, the summer break could cause a learning gap for your kids. Patty Santos reports education experts say just 30 minutes a day is all you need to prevent that summer slide. Pieces do we have? Ready? Count for me. One, two, three. 15 to 30 minutes a day of enrichment activities can go a long way to prevent summer learning loss known as the summer slide. We can see as much as a whole semester of learning loss over the summer when we don't keep it going. Educators at Brighton Preschool okay. gave us some ideas on easy activities. Just tailor it to your child's age and interests. Have them do um, cooking activities with you. That's all math, measuring and counting and timing. Reading, a walk at the park could become a science lesson. Cooking turns into a life skill lesson. Just be engaged. That means phones down and making eye contact. Remember that it's quality of time that you want to work on, not quantity. Student in Marissa Buentaya's class are learning using simple things most families have at home leaves, water, and Legos. As long as we keep on feeding their minds, then everything's gonna be great with them. Keeping older kids motivated is a little tougher. Suggestions, provide them with age-appropriate reading on subjects in which they are interested, and maybe try something this teacher mom did with her own kid. Give them money and a task. So we gave her her own budget. She had to budget, do some good math, and she had to make sure that she had all of her school clothes ready to go. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. You know another way to keep the kids sharp? Sarah's Science Lab. Oh yeah, we have so many science <laughs> lessons available online right now. And in fact, this week we are going to be at the San Antonio Zoo nice. on Wednesday doing a fun ex science, science experiment about why sharks float. Oh. oh, yeah. Do they have sharks? I didn't realize the sharks. San Antonio they Zoo? do. Whoa. You know, sharks are very heavy. You would think that they would sink. Why do they float? Because they don't. I thought maybe because they're. Don't, no, 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 don't ruin it. Find out this <laughs> Wednesday. Look at that. That's a tease for you. They'll figure it out.
It's a fun experiment. Okay. okay, what's not so fun is this heat, guys. But hey, you know, we are from this area. We understand <laughs> this kind of heat. Yeah, it's going to be hot for the next several days. Right now outside, get your uh, activities done before noon because at noon we're going to be looking at temperatures already in the 90s. It's 78 degrees outside right now with a heat index close to 81. Good morning in Kerrville where it's 75, 83 in Del Rio, 79 in Catula, 79 in Gonzales, and 77 in New Braunfels. It's 77 in Hondo, 78 at Stinson. And it's 76 in Lotus this morning. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mostly cloudy to partly cloudy right now. Notice that this is the time to get things done. Temperatures still in the 80s, a bit of a breeze from the south, not all that bad. Then by noon, it's going to be 92. And then in the afternoon, it'll be in the 90s. It'll feel like it's anywhere from 104 to 108 this afternoon with an actual high temperature of 101. At least there will be a breeze from the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at highs in your neighborhoods 100 Yvaldi, 98 in Kerrville, 100 Gonzalez, 106 Catula, 102 Del Rio, 101 in New Braunfels, 101 in Floresville, 102 in Pleasanton, 102 in Divine. But that heat index is going to be a little bit hotter because the humidity is going to be higher, so your body can't cool off as easily. And so, with that, again, heat index values anywhere from 100 to 108 around the San Antonio metro area. It's still going to be hot in the hill country, just not as hot around uh, San Antonio. Now, I want you to look at this graphic carefully. So what I'm showing here is the most 100 degree days to date up to July 9th. Now, last year we had had 31 100 degree days by this time. And in 2009, we had 19 100 degree days up to this date. 2009, we ended up having 59 100 degree days total. The triple digit weather came all throughout July, August and into September. Now, so far this year, we are third place for the most 100 degree days up to this date, including today, 15 forecast 100 degree days. That's a lot. And in fact, looking at this heat high off to the west, we're only going to add to that tally. One thing I do want to note is if you have friends and family up in the Dallas area, uh, they're going to be experiencing a brief period of severe weather here on the east side of this high pressure system. But as this high moves overhead in the coming days, our temperatures are only going to get hotter. Tomorrow, 101. Then by Tuesday, 102. 102 on Wednesday. Take a look at the whole state by Thursday, 103 in San Antonio, but temperatures across the whole state, with the exception of the coast and East Texas, will be ranging anywhere from 100 to 110. So this heat high is going to affect all of Texas. We'll be monitoring the Texas power grid as we get ready for another intense heat wave. And with that high settling over, rain chances are zero in the coming days. And I'm going to be honest with you, it is hard for me to see any kind of weather pattern that's going to shake us out of this heat high. So for the foreseeable future, at least the next seven to 10 days, we're going to be hot. We're going to be seeing no little to no rain chances around San Antonio. There might be a couple of isolated showers near to the coast, but in San Antonio, it's going to be dry as a bone. And coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to show you how that may impact the drought conditions for us. Mm. Okay. I know, I know. I'm the bearer of bad news. We still like you, I guess. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Time now, 616, 78. Degrees. Max was silent. <laughs> <laughs> there are no winners after the Powerball drawing last night. So we'll tell you how much the jackpot is up to now. All right. Talked about the heat. Talked about the bear bad news, a.k.a. Sarah Spivey. But here's good news. There are a lot of cool events happening at libraries around our community today. We have a full list, ones that you're going to want to check out. Welcome back. Here's a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around our city. 11 a.m. today to 11.30 at the Pruitt Library. Children 18 months to 3 years old can enjoy toddler reading time. You get dancing and music. And from 3 to 5 p.m. at Schaefer Library, all ages invited. We have chess, checkers, and dominoes. All the games provided by the library. Great opportunity to become, Sarah Costa, the next great chess master mm. for a look at all the events scheduled for today at different public libraries. Just head to the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. All right, one game. I know you're a big fan of the Powerball. I am. Eight dollars. That's a win, though. I know. I won eight dollars. It's a big. Uh, would you put in? 
How many tickets did you I buy? I think I bought like two. Okay. Yeah, so I won money. You won, you're in the green. I know. Are you going to cash out or are you going to play again? Oh, of course, play again. Okay, why are you going to play again? You can't, you can't win if you don't play, Max. That's a good point. And no big winners last night. No, no big winners last night. And last night's drawing was at $615 million. The pot now jumps to an estimated $650 million. Okay. And would be the ninth largest Powerball prize ever. Are you doing math right now? No, I'm just writing it down. <laughs> the next drawing will be tomorrow night. So let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, one, fireball seven, daily four, five, six, zero, six, fireball five. All right, your cash five, 17, 18, 25, 26, 30. Lotto, Texas, three, 16, 21, 25, 30, 43, since you are the Powerball player. Go ahead, take it away. 7, 23, 24, 32, 43, 18. That's where I got my $8. Oh, that's a good one. And then Power Play 2. Good luck. Welcome back. A new beer is raising more than just spirits at Alamo Beer Company. The brewery launched its new wandering beer, and the face of it might be familiar. So Avery Everett explains how this beer is raising awareness and raising money for ALS research through the story of a Castroville man. That's amazing. Every brew brings more awareness to ALS. Tonight, Alamo Beer Company debuted its Wandering Draft, an IPA that's light, hoppy, and holding a bigger purpose. Well, if you can't tell from the grin on my face, I am beyond excited. Named after Castroville's Juan Reyes, a man who's lived with the progressive neurodegenerative disease for the last eight years. I never imagined that I would see my name on the beer. The beer is a part of Ales for ALS. It's a fundraising program that raises awareness and money for ALS research through microbreweries across the U.S. And now San Antonio, specifically Alamo City Beers, is on that list. Oh yeah, I, I expect it. I expect the sellout. This is a really, really Really good turnout and more and more people are coming in so I'm really happy to be a part of it. On coasters and on posters, Rhea's story is a part of this IPA. Oh look at this, no chugging, no no no, this isn't a chugging contest. Reyes travels nationwide advocating for ALS research, treatment, and changes in laws. He and his wife, Meg, just got back this week from a bucket list road trip. But we did almost like 36 stops. Now the next journey, starting his new treatment on Monday. We've always just had this desire to just do the things that we can while we can. All we can do is live our best lives. These beers may sell out, but Reyes says he's not ready to stop. The land will lend mine to the ALS community for as long as I'm able to speak. Even people who don't typically like IPAs say they love the wandering beer, but it might not last for much longer. They only have about 300 servings. As for where Juan and Meg are headed next, they say their next bucket list item trip is in October. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Great story. If you want to help out, we have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 627, 78 degrees. We have information on an urgent manhunt happening in Pennsylvania for a murder suspect and why this one is particularly unique. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. It is July 9th and I gotta say, we had a weird like week reprieve from the heat. It was very nice. And then yesterday we saw it's back. It's back. And Sarah, with the summer heat in South Texas, we get those chichadas. I yeah, have the cicadas. I have them all over my yard right now. Yeah, they are loud too at all times of the day. And I've got a really cool picture of a cicada emerging from its shell here. This was sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. It's worth reminding people Cicadas, by the time they emerge, they're kind of old. They're older than your dog. They're like 17 years old when they come out of their shell like that. That is crazy. They head out to mate and make the next generation of very loud cicadas. So very impressive. You can see its shell right there. There it's coming out with its wings and it's ready to go. What a beauty. That's what that person said on our KSAT Connect feature. I agree. Uh, 77 in New Braunfels, 77 in Divine, 77 in Hondo. It's 76 in Comfort and 73 in Bernie right now. And here's 
here's today's forecast for you. Get everything done you want done now because it's going to be 92 by noon. So not too bad in the morning hours with temperatures in the 80s and a bit of a breeze. And then in the afternoon, 101 for the high with the heat index close to 106. We are just getting started with the heat coming up. I'm going to talk about how this heat is going to potentially impact our drought conditions in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Starting off with morning headlines, an urgent manhunt for a murder suspect who escaped to jail in Pennsylvania. Take a look. Authorities say this man, 34-year-old Michael Burham, considered dangerous. He had previously led authorities on a multi-state weeks-long manhunt before being captured in South Carolina earlier this year. Here's the thing. Burham escaped from jail on Thursday. He climbed onto exercise equipment, slipped down the fence using a rope made of bed sheets. Very unsettling chatter about where he might be or where he could be hiding. Further complicating the search, authorities say he's a survivalist who can live in the woods for multiple days. Right now, there is a $9,500 reward. A funeral is being held for a former interpreter for the U.S. Special Forces in Afghanistan. Nasrat Ahmed Yar was gunned down in Washington, D.C. while working as a rideshare driver. His friends tell ABC the 31-year-old moved here after the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan and escaped when the Taliban took over. His friends say he decided last minute to take a late-night shift, driving for Lyft to make more money to help his family's family catch up on their bills and when he was and then he was gunned down in his car a good father and a good soldier to immigrate to be a refugee to be a soldier and then for this senseless killing there's no words Yarley's behind a wife and four kids the investigation is still ongoing but there are no updates on who the suspects could be well time is ticking towards a possible strike by UPS workers, more than 3,000 workers, 300,000 workers, they're threatened to walk off the job on August 1st if their union can't figure out a new contract. Negotiations, they were ongoing, but they fell apart earlier last week. Both sides blaming each other from walking away from the bargaining table. The union says part-time salaries remain a sticking point, along with safer working conditions. We're working to get even stronger language and stronger contracts for our people so we don't have people dying on the job every year from heat exhaustion. Um, we need air conditioning in trucks. Uh, we need strong wages and benefits uh, to uplift the middle class. UPS says they are encouraging unions to resume negotiations, hopefully avoiding the strike. An alert as summer concert season kicks into high gear. Ticket scammers, well, they're out there. All right, we've seen so many high-profile concerts around here. Beyonce, Taylor Swift, you name it. ABC's Faith Abube introduces us to some unlucky fans and how you can avoid situations like this. Beyonce's Renaissance Tour set to kick off its North American leg tonight. And many in the Beehive still swarming to snag one of the hottest tickets this summer. But the Better Business Bureau warning buyer beware of scammers out to get diehard fans willing to do anything to secure those premium tickets. The BBB telling ABC News that since January 2022, they've received just over 23,000 ticket complaints for various events. That is not normal. Uh, that is an enormous figure. And it's not just the Queen Bee's fans at risk. Missouri's Attorney General also warning Swifties to be wary of suspicious ticket sales as Taylor Swift's concert kicks off in Kansas City, Missouri this weekend. For Kevin, Adrian, and their daughter Elsa, that warning coming a little too late. I was really excited to go, um, looking forward to going to her concert. But instead, the Taylor Swift superfan and her family say they lost $1,000 to a Facebook scammer. We asked that mutual friend if this guy was legit, the tickets were legit, and he messaged him and said yes. So we started with 1000 and then he just left. So we messaged the friend we had in common, and he said his Facebook account got hacked. It wasn't him. So we contacted Venmo right away, but there was nothing they could do. The BBB says you can protect yourself by being cautious about buying tickets through social media ads. Buy only from trusted vendors or directly from the venue whenever possible. And use payment methods that come with protection, like credit cards. There are a lot of folks who are looking to go to a concert, go to a sporting event, go to a festival. And unfortunately, there are also a lot of folks who are looking to cash in on that enormous market. 
And going back to Elsa's story, she was in the ICU battling leukemia just before that scammer took off with the money for the Taylor Swift concert ticket. But a good Samaritan heard her story and decided to gift her two new concert tickets, meaning tonight she will be in that stadium when Taylor Swift performs in Kansas City. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here at home, coming up today on Leading SA. Well, we've learned the latest job numbers across the country, but what does the job market here in San Antonio look like? Greater SATX works to bring in new businesses, prepare the future workforce of our community, and support local talent. That's why this morning at 8 a.m., we're going to have a representative from Greater SATX join us, talking about local jobs, opportunities, and growth, as well as summer programs for the young members of our community. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us 8 a.m. for the full conversation. Time now, 637, 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Elton John said farewell last night. We'll take a look back at his legendary career and farewell tour. I, I went to one of these farewell tours oh. five years ago. Okay. So is this going to be his final? This, this is like Tom Brady <laughs> retiring from the NFL. <laughs> All right. And hey, a new show on Broadway using the hits of Britney Spears. Been in the news a lot recently. We're going to sing some show tunes coming up, at least. We are? Well. We are singing these show tunes? And by we, I mean the Sarahs of the show. No, Max, you teased it. You, you've, mm. you've got to be our lead singer. You've got to be Britney. 78 degrees at 638 this morning. Oh my goodness, it's so humid outside. What will our heat index be and will the humidity let up? Sarah Spivey, let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. All right, so we know, Sarah, you tended to the garden yesterday. Yeah, I have to do more. I have to go out there with the, yeah. the cutters and cut oh, all the branches do down. Thing. Did you make it out and about morning? yesterday? Um, in the morning when it wasn't too hot, uh, you know, after noon, I just want to stay inside. And it's miserable. Okay, close your eyes because here's the bad news for you. Wait, close my eyes or ears? Cover my ears? What are we doing? Well, just, everything? Leave, just leave the station. <laughs> But also, please watch my forecast. Okay. <laughs> you can see over the next several days, we are going to be well above 100. And you factor in the heat index, it's going to feel anywhere from 105 to 110 in the coming days. And I do not see an exception to this forecast for a while around San Antonio. As we take a look across the state of Texas, though, there are some severe storms moving through the Dallas metro area as we speak. These are going to be moving through and done in the next hour, hour and a half, and they'll be moving through parts of East Texas. But here in San Antonio, heat high, firmly in place, and it's going to be moving east over the coming days and really just increasing our temperatures even more and taking away our rain chances. Here's a look at the potential rainfall over the next 10 days. You can see that a good portion of the United States will get rain, but here in South Central Texas, we are going to be dry as a bone over at least the next 10 days, potentially even longer. And when you look at the drought monitor, the area that needs the rain the most is South Central Texas in the hill country, but we're not going to be seeing any rain. There's still exceptional drought for Kerrville down to Bernie, extreme drought for northwestern Bear County all the way up to Fredericksburg and San Antonio under moderate and severe drought. We are not going to be seeing any rain. We're likely going to see the drought get even worse before it gets better potentially in the fall. We'll have to wait and see. 78 degrees outside right now, mostly cloudy. As you can see, that humidity is hanging thick in the air. Dew points are in the mid 70s, so it is going to be a humid day. And when we look at temperatures, it's 83 in Del Rio, 79 in Catula, 74 in Kerrville, and 77 in New Braunfels. A closer view, 73 Rio Medina, 78 in Castroville, and 77 at JBSA Randolph. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mostly cloudy right now, partly cloudy by 10, 85 degrees. Again, get things done outdoors now because it's going to get hot quickly. By noon, it's going to be 92. And then look at the heat index this afternoon. Anywhere from 104 to 108 with a high temperature of 101 in San Antonio. We are going to add on to that triple digit tally today. It'll be 102 in Del Rio, 96 though in Rock Springs. Not all that bad up in the higher 
higher elevations near to Rock Springs. 106 in Catula, 100 in Gonzales, 100 in Canyon Lake, and 101 in Austin. But take a look at the heat index value. Notice how much worse it is to the south. So in Kennedy, heat index is going to be 107. In Catula, 114. In Beeville, 110. Where there's higher humidity, we're going to have a hotter heat index. That's the way that the atmosphere works for us. So try to find a way to stay cool, everyone, over the next several days. Again, not much of a break for us in sight. This time of year, the place we look to for relief is often the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, you know, a tropical system would bring us some rain, but I do not see anything in the near future, at least especially over the next seven days, bringing rain uh, to uh, the U.S. Thanks, Sarah. All right, now to a musical bopping all along Broadway. Once upon a one more time. Love it, because, you know, one more time. Mm -hmm. It's spinning the hits of Britney Spears and rewriting the fairy tale ending. And oops, he does it again. ABC's Will Gans is going behind the curtain. Take Go a look. Get about that. All eyes on Broadway. As the music of Britney Spears hits the center of the ring. In Once Upon a One More Time. The audience, they are having so much fun. They are partying, they are laughing, they are yeah. feeling the feels, and it just feels like a full night of theater. It's a musical love letter to the princess of pop. Riga Heelan stars as Cinderella, making her Broadway debut. It's surreal and yet the most real thing ever just because of how much I believe in this and believed in it from the second that I read it um, and just sort of felt it in my bones and saw it in my life. And next to her, Justin Guarini, who stars as Prince Charming. It is a party. It is fun. It is Britney Spears. It is laughter. It is all the feels. Oops, he did it again. 22 years after American Idol, Let's sing together. Justin is once again using his talents to cover chart topping hits. Britney giving the show her stamp of approval. Wishing the cast and crew well on opening night. Writing on Instagram, I've seen the show and it is so funny, smart, and brilliant. For some of us, Happily Ever After uh, looks like a one-on-one -on -one uh, so yeah, Britney Spears so dance gross, lesson with the most charming of princes. Right, now let's put it with the arms. Oops, I did it again. Right, I played with your heart. Uh, uh, yeah! <laughs> Nice work, nice work. Oh, I had a good work. teacher. In a Broadway season full of jukebox musicals, this one unites audiences of all types. Britney fans, fairy tale fans, and musical theater fans ready to keep on dancing till the world ends. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. All right, this is a big question of the morning. Is it really a goodbye yellow brick road? Singer Elton John wrapping up his farewell tour in Sweden last night. The tour featured more than 300 performances, more than 6 million fans across the world tuning in to see the legendary musician. Elton John's career has spanned more than 50 years. I only ask, is this the last one? Because Sarah Costa saw the farewell tour five years ago. Yeah, or maybe more than that. I think it was like in 2017. And it was great. Cried, loved it. Another concert that was great was Taylor Swift, and she spent the weekend in Kansas City as part of her Eras tour, and a farmer welcomed her with open crops. So check this out. Kansas City farmer Rob Stouffer at KC welcomes Taylor in the ground and is working on her portrait. He says his team at Precision Mazes convinced him to give this warm welcome he initially didn't want to, but realized this might have been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Oh, wow, her signature and everything. We're just here to celebrate with the city and with, with the event. It really is Taylor Swift coming to town. It is a phenomenon, and uh, we're just for one place, small part of it. You know you've made it in life when that, you know. <laughs> when they're etching you into their crops. All right, he said it was done all in one day. Wow, good for them. And his team hopes Taylor sees it before she leaves tomorrow for Denver. 
And I want to go back to that Britney Spears musical, Max. Mm -hmm. I looked it up because we were asking about this. Mm -hmm. So it has been confirmed that the license agreement with Britney Spears was negotiated, agreed to, and signed by the pop star herself back in 2022. Yeah, that's probably why she posted on Instagram saying, come watch it. She'll yeah. probably get some royalties. I think so. All right, time now, 649, 77 degrees. A group of artists are urging San Antonio to become a no-kill city. We'll take a look at some of their pet portraits. All right, let's take a live look out of the roadways. Not too many people out and about. Maybe some people headed to church earlier in the morning. But like we've been saying, if you have things to do, errands to run, groceries to get, do it early. Even that walk from the HEB to the car, really hot out there, especially in the afternoon. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, one, fireball seven, daily four, five, six, zero, six, fireball five. And your cash five, 17, 18, 25, 26, 30, lotto Texas, three, 16, 21, 25, 30, 43. And here we go. Powerball, no jackpot winner. Be still could have won a few million dollars or just a few dollars. Here are the numbers, 7, 23, 24, 32, 43, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Artists using street art to promote better outcomes for San Antonio's homeless pets and making city animal shelters no-kill shelters. This was the goal of a chalk street art event yesterday hosted by No Kill San Antonio. The animal advocates say the city's animal care services euthanized more than 2,900 animals last year. And... They've already surpassed that number in 2023. Partnering with local artists, they took to the streets on Nueva and St. Mary's, trying to write the names and draw portraits of the animals that lost their lives in shelters that simply had no space to take care of them. The group also emphasizing animal health care, such as spay and neutering pets, reducing the number of strays in our area. It's hard whenever you're broke to be able to pay for those things. But it is one of those things, if we don't take care of it, it gets exponentially worse for everyone. The group is hoping San Antonio adopts the no-killer shelter model that will address concerns for both public safety and human treatment of animals in our shelters. A senior pet sanctuary has opened up in Denver, Colorado, with the mission to provide a passionate dog retirement community. So Pepper Senior Dog Sanctu Sanctuary is a veterinarian supervised sanctuary that provides small group and one-on-one -on -one care. There's an enormous space to play, lounge, and sleep. There's also individual bedroom suites, professionally trained staff and volunteers, and for the furry friends, that extra medical care that's dedicated, and there's also dedication to physical therapy. To adopt a senior dog, once you get that dog in an environment that's loving and that there's appropriate care, that, that dog, will be with you. It's, a, it's not, you're not going to adopt this dog and two months later that dog's going to pass. If you take care of this dog, this dog will be your companion for a while. It's rewarding and magical. If you're interested in donating or sponsoring a dog, there's more information on Pepper Senior Dog Sanctuary at their website, psds.org. Time now, 655, 77 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, it's going to be hot today. 85 degrees at 10, 92 at noon. We were just talking about yard work. We need to get it done now because it's going to be hot this afternoon. 101 for the high, feeling like 106. South winds at 10 to 15, so at least there will be a breeze. Look at the forecast. Just take a deep breath and say to yourself, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> temperatures are going to climb to 102 by Tuesday and Wednesday, 103 by Thursday, Friday. Heat index values all week long are going to be ranging from 105 to 108 um, to kind of mismanage a quote from one of my favorite adult beverage drinkers. Where's this going? Stay hydrated, my oh. friend. <laughs> <laughs> stay thirsty. Isn't it stay thirsty? Stay yeah, thirsty. I'm, I'm saying I, I'm mismanaging oh. the quote. Stay okay. hydrated, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Hey, don't forget, Wimby plays tonight at 7 p.m. Is 7 that correct? 7 p.m. ESPN 2. Well, I say he's going to play. The Spurs Summer yeah. League plays the Spurs, uh, Yeah. Will he play? Probably. Probably. Right? Uh, Champagne? Yeah, Julian Champagne has been awesome. On fire. Uh, Champagne yeah. and Wimby are just fun names to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's good about it. That's fantastic. Dominic Barlow also. So, a lot to go. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at AM. See you guys at 8. Stay hydrated, my friend. <laughs>
guys. <laughs> you proud of that? I am. <laughs> Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. It is 79 degrees to start your Sunday morning. As you can see, not exactly a beautiful sight out there, hot and humid. And really, this is just the start of another heat wave here in South Central Texas. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. Welcome morning. back. You joined us earlier. It is 8 a.m. It is Sunday, July 9th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday we went over all the ways to beat the heat. You're a big fan of the, it's called UPF? Yeah, UPF clothing. It's like, you know, SPF. Yeah, it's like long, long sleeve. sleeves. Yeah, and so yeah. you were out and about in the garden yesterday. Did you, you rock the big hat, the UPF? Uh, go? I didn't do UPF. Okay. Which explains I got a little bit of color. I've been trying on to get me. color for 31 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, I always have the visor with the SPF 50, Sarah, and I'm definitely probably going to need it today. Yeah, I think what we need this morning is we need a picture on KSAT Connect from Sarah Costa of her full outdoor gear. Ooh. So we can show it a little later. <laughs> All right, yeah, but you've got a few hours here before it gets pretty unbearably hot this afternoon. However, it's not too bad outside right now. It's definitely cloudy. We've got a few peaks of sunshine in the mix, and it's most definitely humid. But it's 80 degrees, and we've got a nice breeze from the south at about 10 miles per hour. That southern breeze is going to keep the humidity high though today and so we will have a heat index value. Good morning in Rock Springs where it's 75, it's 77 uh, in Hondo, 80 in Pleasanton, 82 in Del Rio, 81 in New Braunfels and 80 in Gonzales. But here's your forecast for the day today. By 10 we'll be at 85, noon 92 and then the afternoon's just going to be a scorcher. High temperature right near 101, south winds at 5 to 15. That 101 is going to feel more like 105 and then later on tonight temperatures will fall into the the 80s. But as Max said earlier, we are just getting started with the heat. Temperatures crank up and our rain chances go way down for a long period of time. Coming up in the forecast, I'll tell you how hot we'll get in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. An update to a story we first brought you yesterday morning. It was late breaking news all through yesterday. A man in custody for allegedly threatening a security guard with a knife, then barricading himself. That's right. This happened at the Toyota plant on the South City Southwest side. SWAT had to use tear gas to get the man out. That man now facing charges of aggravated robbery, criminal trespass, and criminal mischief. A security guard told San Antonio police a man drove up to his security shack at the Toyota plant and then went inside. He said when he told the man to leave, he refused, showed him a knife, and stole his phone. The guard left and called 911. SWAT responded to the scene, and after four hours of negotiations, they used tear gas to get the man to come out. A spokesperson with Toyota says there were no injuries. And a man is killed in a shooting that may have stemmed from a love triangle, has been identified by the Bear County Medical Examiner. 41-year-old Bobby James Yanez died from multiple gunshot wounds. His death is being ruled a homicide. San Antonio police say the shooting happened at the Pelican Landing in the Mission Del Lago neighborhood Wednesday morning. 32-year-old Jesse Gomez is accused of shooting Yanez after he visited his home. He told police he believed Giannis was in a relationship with his partner, which led to an argument and deadly shooting. Well, Hispanics in Texas now make up the largest share of the state's population. All of this according to the recent census data. Now, since 2000, the Hispanic population has doubled to nearly 12 million Hispanic Texans. And demographers predict there's going to be 20 million Hispanic Texans by 2050. A chunk of the growth comes from Hispanics moving from other states around our country to here, the Lone Star State. Another piece of growth comes from the birth rates. Nearly half of Hispanic Texans live in Dallas, Harris, El Paso, Hidalgo, and here in Bear County. San Antonio, the only city that actually has a majority of the Hispanic population, a standard of about 64% of our city's population. Well, this past week, we learned the latest job numbers across the country and here at home, Greater SATX. It's a public-private partnership. They work to bring in new businesses, prepare the future workforce of our community, and of course, support the current local talent. So joining us in today's Leading Essay segment is Romanita Mata Barrera with Greater SATX. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you both. Thank you for having me. All right, so Romanita, for those who don't know, what exactly is Greater SATX and what exactly separates it from, say, the Chamber of Commerce? Certainly. Uh, Greater SATX is a regional economic development partnership. We work very closely with our eight-county 
region to locate companies into the San Antonio region. So we are actively uh, always recruiting companies in high wage, high growth industries like manufacturing, bioscience, finance, and tech, ensuring that they can move their locations, ideally their headquarters to our San Antonio region. But we also work very closely with our local employers to ensure that they stay here in San Antonio and that we are able to support their growth, be it through uh, increase of their talent needs or any other issues that they may have, ensuring that they are staying in San Antonio and that we are able to meet their their growth and expansion needs, especially for those who are offering high wage jobs and opportunities for our community. And so that that, in essence, is really a lot of the work that we do. We also focus on a lot of labor market information, and we work very closely with our colleges, universities and school districts to ensure that we've got that workforce that's ready in San Antonio to take on these jobs. And that is uh, primarily our function, the relocation and the expansion of uh, high wage jobs and employers here in our region. So you just touched on this on us a bit. So, you know, just this week, we've talked extensively about job numbers across the country. So what is Greater SATX doing to keep and support employment talent in San Antonio? Certainly, uh, you know, there is a lot of discussion often when uh, we're talking about relocating a company to, to the San Antonio region. And there's talks about tax abatements or incentives that companies are given either by the local government or the state government. But the reality is most companies today, the number one thing that they're looking uh, for any relocation uh, prospect is workforce. If I move my company to your city, to your region, do you have the workforce today that if I open my doors, you're ready to operate? And our, um, you know, our answer to them is absolutely, we do. We we have the skilled workforce. I love it, Max, that you led with that great stat about you know largest growing Hispanic community here in Texas. Diversity is key to so many employers, and that is just who we are as our population. And so really honing in on educational attainment, ensuring that we have uh, youth that are completing degrees and going into degrees that are critical to the employers we have is uh, is one of the key things that we do. And so we work very closely with our school districts, but we also work very closely with our colleges and universities to ensure that they are preparing the future talent for these companies that will ideally relocate and stay here for 5, 10, 20, 50 years in our San Antonio community. So speaking of Local schools, local universities, we know Greater SATX really going above and beyond this summer, trying to develop that future workforce. Tell us about the programs that you have in place specifically aimed at preparing the youth. Sure thing. This is our eighth annual summer of our high school uh, paid internship program. And I emphasize paid because we know that youth, um, that summer job is not only an opportunity for them to earn maybe just a little bit of spending money, but we have a lot of youth where, you know, their families are depending on them to also provide financially. And so we really stress the opportunity for youth to intern, if you can imagine, with phenomenal companies like USAA, like Toyota, like HEB, like the Witty Museum, to really learn about what does it mean to be successful in the workplace. And so uh, a lot of these phenomenal employers are helping these youth at a very young age develop their business acumen and also really helps them inform if I go to college, what does a career in accounting or tech really look like? And so that's really critical. We'd like to say that we're a partner to our school districts in ensuring that youth are college and career ready and have greater awareness to, you know, you did a story on Toyota. Their manufacturing is one of our fastest growing sectors across the San Antonio region. And we need to make sure that youth and their parents know that manufacturing jobs are very diverse and they're also very high tech. And there's nothing like actually working at the job to get that that uh, opportunity to really, uh, really build your workforce readiness. OK, bigger picture, Romanita. San Antonio continues to grow and more businesses are moving here. So what is your pitch to companies around the country to pick the Alamo City? Absolutely. Love it. We have it's all about the people we have. People are our greatest assets. Again, we have a highly diverse population. We have a uh, really uh, strong performing school districts and our university partners uh, are phenomenal to this. They are not only producing the talent that they will need, but they are, have also become really strong research and development partners to our companies. And then quality of place and quality of life uh, across our community. Those are all critical jobs, people and place. And we have got all of those three phenomenal factors to make the move to our San Antonio region. 
All right, Romanita with Greater SATX. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We really appreciate your time. <laughs> and anyone who missed any part of the interview, had any questions about the program, we're going to be having all that information throughout the morning. Just head to ksat.com. Time now, 810. 78 degrees. Still ahead, the Northern Lights are expected to put on a show. We'll tell you when it will begin and how many U.S. states could get a chance to see the spectacle. Plus, new research uncovering new details about a 5,000-year-old discovery found in 2008. We're going to explain what exactly the research shows. Already 79 degrees at 810, and you can just feel the mugginess at this shot. You're looking outside with live cam. Uh, you know, how hot is it really going to feel like with that heat index? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. New research reveals that a lavish tomb discovered near Seville, Spain in 2008 actually belonged to a woman, not a man, as previously thought. The tomb carried a elephant's tusk, ivory comb, crystal dagger, and an ostrich eggshell along with other jewels. So scientists analyzed the pelvis bone of the skeleton, initially identifying it as a young male, naming it the ivory man, but new research found it to be a woman from examining the teeth enamel. All right, so people in 17 states might be able to see the Northern Lights next week, July 13th. If it's on your bucket list, you might actually get the chance if you live in many of the states bordering Canada. You didn't know we do not border Canada here in Texas, so no. you probably will not. The glow is produced from electrons from space that interact with the sun and Earth's magnetic field. If you're interested in seeing them, you should get away from city lights as the day approaches. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will monitor the activity and release a forecast of its own. And it really is cool. One of our producers, Colin, he used to live in North Dakota, and he was able to see it when he lived over there. Absolutely. Every now and then it gets as far south as, you know, even further south in the Dakotas, too. So very interesting. Yeah, will not be visible here in San Antonio. <laughs> I know, I know, but we will No have fun here. Well, it is going to be hot. Yeah, you know, a lot fun. of people Adding don't. To the no fun. A lot of people move to Texas because they don't want to be around any kind of cold whatsoever. Yeah. Max Massey. That in Texas, but yeah. Yeah, that in Texas, <laughs> true. <sighs> uh, but uh, with that comes the heat of the summer, and it, we are going to be locked into some heat over the next seven to ten days at least in San Antonio. Outside right now, we are looking at peaks of sunshine through these clouds, so these clouds are going to clear out very quickly here. It's 80 degrees, a stout wind from the south at 10 miles per hour, cranking up the humidity. Dew points are in the low 70s. Whenever we have a dew point in the low 70s, uh, you can really really feel the humidity outside and you're going to feel it this afternoon too when temperatures are at their hottest 73 in Los Maples 75 in Bernie good morning in Castroville it's 80 degrees 81 in New Braunfels and 79 in Canyon Lake take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast let's just get down to it already by 10 we'll see skies clearing it'll be 85 by noon 92 and then in the afternoon that's when it's going to be the hottest right around 101 5 p.m. but you can see all afternoon long we're going to be dealing with a heat index value or what it feels like outside of above 100. So if you have to do your um, uh, outdoor plans, I would do so right now. It doesn't feel too bad out there, just a little humid. It is going to be breezy though throughout the day. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at forecast heat high, uh, forecast highs rather. 98 in Kerrville, 96 in Rock Springs, upper 90s for the hill country. Those higher elevations help shave off a few degrees during the peak heat of the summer. 102 in Del Rio, 106 in Catula, 100 in Gonzales, and 100 in Canyon Lake. Around the San Antonio metro area, 97 in Holotus and in Bernie. Again, those higher elevations help just slightly with the temperatures. 100 in Seguin, 100 in Hondo. It'll be uh, 101 in Nixon, Smiley, and 100 in Gonzales. But with the high humidity, this is what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel anywhere from 105 to 108 out there. So please find a way to stay hydrated today. It's going to be very hot. All right, interesting graphic I'm showing you here. So when we look at the years with the most 100 degrees to date, so up to July 9th, 2023 is in third place with 15 100 degree days. That includes today's forecast of 100 degrees. Now, uh, the top spots go to 2022, just last year, when by this time we'd had 31 degree days. But this is where it gets interesting. In 2009, we had had 19 100 
100 degree days by this point. Most of 2009's triple digit days came in later July and August. So it is entirely possible that we could be contending with 2009 for at least one of the top spots for the most 100 degree days on record for San Antonio. It has been a hot summer for sure because we had that heat high move over in June and we've got another one moving over right now as we speak. Now looking out toward Dallas though, there is some uh, storminess moving into parts of East Texas. Uh, so keep that in mind if you have friends and family up there, uh, but that heat high is what's going to dominate our four cast in San Antonio over the next several days. Tomorrow we'll be at 101 as that heat high moves over 102 by Tuesday, 102 by Wednesday. And then look at the state of Texas on Thursday. With the exception of East Texas and the coastal communities, all of Texas is going to be dealing with triple digit weather. It's going to be interesting to see how the the power grid handles that. But of course, we'll continue to keep you posted on that. And unfortunately, without uh, that uh, with that heat high overhead, we're not going to have any rain chances over the next several days. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about how that may impact our drought. And I know you've heard them. I know you've seen them. I got some interesting pictures of some cicadas I want to show you. You have in your garden? Oh. They're like everywhere. Yeah. They leave their bodies. Yeah, the cicadas that emerge, <laughs> they, when they emerge, what's crazy is they're actually quite old. So, yeah, I'll tell you how old they are usually. And they leave their like little mummies everywhere. Well, don't steal her thunder. Well, I'm just saying, get ready, because they, they leave their bodies. Okay, this is like you a horror know. film. All right, time now, just about 820, 80 degrees. Up next in Hollywood, new movies hitting theaters this week. We'll tell you about them when we come back. These days, whenever you see Tom Cruise, chances are he's on the move towards something, driving, flying, or just running. And running, launching his body into the air, putting his life on the line to give audiences that only at the movies thrill. As in this sensational stunt for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, the seventh MI film opening next week. And with his feet on the ground, Tom Cruise, the producer, has become the movie's mightiest advocate. Tom Cruise is really the man who saved movie theaters last summer with uh, Top Gun Maverick. And he's looking to do it again this year with the latest Mission Impossible film. It's been a high anxiety summer for Hollywood, with a writer's strike shutting down production, the iffy economics of streaming getting close scrutiny, and even some franchise favorites facing headwinds. Box office revenue down 2% from the same time last year, down 20% overall when compared to pre-pandemic 2019. From Wes Anderson's Asteroid City to the Jim Caviezel star Sound of Freedom, smaller films at different ends of the audience spectrum have done fine, but blockbusters are what summer runs on. Cruz's latest has also been vying for those coveted IMAX screens versus Christopher Nolan's much-awaited Oppenheimer. Coming out a week later, when Greta Gerwig's eagerly anticipated Barbie hits theaters too. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. And Cruz is supporting them both. This summer is full of amazing movies to see in theaters, Cruz wrote on Instagram. These are just a few that we can't wait to see on the big screen. Hollywood has put a lot of pressure on this summer to be, you know, the return to kind of a normal movie-going season. That was Chris Conley reporting. I'm excited to see the Barbie movie. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> there are a lot of good movies coming out. You don't want to see Barbie? I will see Oppenheimer. You can see Barbie. Sarah Spivey can see both of them. She'll go with you to see Barbie first, and she'll meet me at Oppenheimer. Okay. That'd be great. Deal. All right. <laughs> now, this is about 826, 80 degrees. You're not going to the movies. No, nah, I'm not. <laughs> I'll wait till it comes out on streaming. <laughs> All right, let's look at these lot of numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, one, Fireball seven, Daily four, five, six, zero, six, Fireball five. You gotta really win the lottery to even go to the movies these days. It's so expensive. I know. All right, here's your cash five, 17, 18, 25, 26, 30. Lotto, Texas three, 16, 21, 25, 30, 43. Here we go, Powerball, no jackpot winner, but over six. 
600 million. Now over 650, right? Yeah. Because it was 600. I think it's like, what, would you say 10th or 9th largest? 9th largest. And our Saracosta won a little bit. $8 of that jackpot. That's enough to buy more tickets. Absolutely. Here are your numbers. 7, 23, 24, 32, 43. Powerball 18, power play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, July 9th. Another scorcher today. Okay, so yesterday I ended up doing a bunch of work outside. It wasn't in direct sunlight. What were you doing outside? Well, because I wanted to get some fresh air because we don't get out and about. So wait, much. were you like on the river walk or you on your balcony? On the balcony. I love how Max's version of being out and about no, is no, no, no. I didn't say on it. his we balcony. We did go run errands, and I warned people earlier, if you are running errands, do it early, because even that walk from the HEB, and I park far away from people. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, I think you got like a little bit parking of Parking lots can be Max, very hot. you are a spoiled, spoiled man. All right, whatever. <laughs> I live in an apartment. I'm not a, I'm an apartment doll. I don't have property of my own like you two. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about cicadas. <laughs> they are everywhere out there. Yeah, take a look at this picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Cicadas, I don't know about you, but I was talking to uh, one of my coworkers, and it seems like there's a lot more cicadas out there this year than there were last year. You can hear them for sure. And the thing is, cicadas are very interesting because they're actually years old before they emerge. Uh, and once they emerge, they really only live for a couple of weeks uh, to uh, increase their population and eat. All right, temperatures out there right now, 77 in Bulverde, 81 in Castroville, 76 in Bandera, and uh, it is 81 in New Braunfels. Today's forecast calls for a high temperature right around 101. It is going to be hot out there, and temperatures are going to, uh, pardon me, it's going to feel more like it's 105 because of the high humidity. So coming up in the forecast, we are going to be talking about how we're about to enter a long stretch of triple digit weather for honestly the foreseeable future. Details on how hot we'll get and how it may affect the drought coming up. Sarah, Max. Thanks, Sarah. Now a man shot in the leg yesterday morning now facing murder charges after he tried to confront the person he thought fired the gunshots. So the deadly shooting happened on the city's southwest side. That's where the victim, 43-year-old Gilbert Lopez, was allegedly shot by 36-year-old Joseph Fernandez. So police say 10 minutes prior to that deadly shooting, Fernandez was hit in the leg by a bullet when someone drove by his home. Oh, arrest records show Fernandez and his brother then drove to the home on Middlefield. They went to confront someone they suspected of the drive-by shooting. Fernandez got into an argument with Lopez, who was then shot in the chest. Fernandez eventually arrested back at his home, now facing a murder charge. Headed to El Paso, where police there looking for a gunman who opened fire at a party that injured six people. This all happened Friday night. El Paso police say the shooting happened near the El Paso Country Club. Witnesses telling investigators the gunman targeted a high school party. Now, important to note, none of the injures, injuries are considered to be life-threatening. But right now, still, no suspects are in custody. Von Orme police officer had to be cut out of her vehicle after she became trapped inside of it. That officer was on her way to a crash yesterday evening when she became involved in another crash at the intersection of I-35 South Frontage Road at Loop 1604. So you can see the patrol unit flipped on its side. She was cut out and taken to the hospital for injuries. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say she was alert and responding. The crash did cause a temporary traffic delay in that area for the time, but has since been cleared. And in Houston, health officials in Harris County and Fort Bend said they've received several reports of infections as a non-life-threatening gastrointestinal illness caused by a parasite. Uh, people can get it by consuming contaminated food or even water. Officials in Houston say the cases tend to rise between April and August. They also advise things to do to prevent getting infected. Simple things, wash your hands with soap and water, wash all fresh produce and all cutting boards after you use them. Of course, keep your utensils and surfaces clean. As the war in Ukraine enters its 500th day, a decision made by President Joe Biden to send cluster munitions to Ukraine is sparking conversations. ABC's James, James Longman explains why the Pentagon or how the Pentagon says Ukraine needs these munitions to continue the counteroffense against Russian troops. On Friday, Ukraine's 3rd Assault Brigade released this footage showing its soldiers storming Russian positions during fighting near Bakhmut. 
Ukraine says its troops have advanced by more than a kilometer near the eastern city in the past day of fighting against Russian forces. As Ukrainian troops continue to mount their counteroffensive against Russia, the White House has promised to supply Ukraine with cluster munitions, a controversial move. The Pentagon says Ukraine is running low on artillery shells and needs the munitions. We recognize that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm, but there is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory. Russian officials have responded, calling this decision a sign of desperation, which they say endangers civilians and risks escalation. These cluster munitions can be launched by an artillery shell, rocket or drone, and they explode mid-flight and then rain down smaller bombs across a wide area. That can cause massive damage, and bomblets that don't explode create minefields on the ground, which pose a significant risk to civilians, especially children. The US had previously condemned the use of these munitions by Russia, but the White House says they believe it's different for Ukraine to use these weapons defensively in order to protect their own people on their own soil. They said Ukraine has given written assurances they'll not use them in civilian areas and will do extensive demining after the war ends. The United Nations estimates more than 9,000 civilians have died since the beginning of this war, among them more than 500 children. That's more than one child for every day of this war so far, and the true numbers are likely higher. James Longman, ABC News in Lviv, Ukraine. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wrapping up her five-day trip to China. So she said that her meetings with top Chinese officials, they were direct, substantive and productive. Yellen held a news conference just yesterday at the conclusion of the talk. She said the United States anticipates more frequent and regular communications with Beijing. She added that whatever differences exist between our two countries, both sides need to work together. Important to note, Janet Yellen, the second U.S. cabinet member to visit Beijing in the recent weeks. Fourteen people are dead after a building collapsed in Brazil. According to the state's Secretary of Social Defense, those who died include six children, ages five through eight. Three victims were rescued alive. Officials say the building was occupied by homeless people, although living there had been forbidden since 2010. Search and rescue operations ended yesterday afternoon. A North Carolina amusement park announcing it plans to fix the alarming crack in the roller coaster after it was spotted by a concerned father. An ongoing investigation launched. The ride was shut down after the shocking video that was taken last month. It showed the crack open and close as the roller coaster rounded the turn. Look at that. That is terrifying. In a statement, the amusement park said that the split formed along a weld line in the steel column, adding that after replacing the column, they will operate performing tests and inspections. The North Carolina State Labor Commissioner says the ride will not reopen without a new certificate of operation. I've told our staff and I've told Carewinds that uh, we will not do that until we are 100% comfortable uh, with uh, the safety protocols. You probably saw the crack in the roller coaster because it went viral. It's been all over social media. North Carolina officials say they are confident about these critical steps now being taken. U.S. employers added jobs last month, but growth missed expectations. That's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The U.S. added 209,000 jobs in June. That's lower than May's strong showing and about 16,000 less than economists were predicting. This is the lowest monthly gain since December of 2020. As for the unemployment rate, it dropped 0.1% to 3.6. Still near a record low. All right, U.S. women's national team star Megan Rapino, a two-time Women's World Cup winner, announcing she will retire at the end of the 2023 National Women's Soccer League season. Rapino, an Olympic gold medalist from London in 2012, will play in her fourth and final World Cup this summer in Australia and New Zealand before returning to her NWSL team. Well, back here at home, a new beer raising more than just spirits at Alamo Beer Company. Yesterday, the brewery launched its new Wandering Beer, and the face of it may be familiar. The beer, named after Juan Reyes, He's a man from Castroville, and he is living with ALS. He has this progressive neurodegenerative disease, and he's had it for the last eight years. This new beer, it's an IPA that tastes light and hoppy. Now, Reyes says he hopes the beer raises money for ALS research, and he says even when it sells out, he won't stop advocating for awareness of the disease. A lot of the patients lose their voice early in the condition, and I promise myself that I will lend mine 
the airless community for as long as I'm able to speak. So just how long will this limited edition beer and fundraiser last? Well, Alamo Beer Company said they had two full kegs before the launch party yesterday, so make sure to try it soon. And happening today, if you want to get out and do something fun with the family while enjoying the AC, Frida Fest, celebrating the life and legacy of Frida Kahlo, at Kahlo is at the Rolling Oaks Mall from noon to 6 p.m. Those who attend can expect to see fashion shows, photo ops, and musical performances. It's an event open to all. There's also free admission. And hey, you just talked about employment numbers. We got jobs. Looking ahead, Goodwill hosting a career fair this Tuesday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's going to be held at the Second Baptist Church Community Center. That is 3310 East Commerce Street. Uh, they're ready to hire more than 2,000 positions. Interviews are going to be held on site. You're encouraged to register. Before you go, goodwillsa.org. Time now, just about 8.41, 80 degrees. You're headed to the beach this week, and a new report shows some oh, beaches startling. in Texas are not safe to swim in because of bacteria. We'll tell you where the ones with the most problems are at. And speaking of beaches, sea lions continuing to glow, grow thicker in California. What experts are now saying, causing it. What's going on with all the water? 81 degrees at 841. It is muggy out there. And it's going to be another triple digit day. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Unusual behavior among sea lions in California is being reported by wildlife officials. Experts say it may have to do with what's in the water. So sea lions have recently been growing sicker and have made recent attacks on people in California. In the last couple of weeks, one victim saying the sea lion seems stressed and officials confirming that they do act unusual when they are in those stressful situations. They're also pointing out it's due to a recent algae bloom that has produced a different kind of toxin in the water. Neurotoxin can cause seizures and even death in sea lions. According to LA County officials, more than 100 sea lions have been affected in the last couple of weeks. Uh, back here at home, a new report from the environmental group Environment Texas shows that pathogens pose a risk at, get this, a majority of Texas beaches. So they tested 61 beaches and out of those 61, 55 had unsafe levels of fecal bacteria. Beaches with the highest percent of being unsafe to swim were in found in Nueces County, Corpus Christi area, right now on KSET.com. We have a full list of all the unsafe beaches to swim in and a list of safe beaches to swim in as well. So you were just down in Corpus? Yeah, so I, I go to the beach. I'm, I'm a Corpus Christi girl. Mm -hmm. Well, the beach I go to is a national seashore. Okay. That was not on the list. But a lot of these beaches, I'm serious, yeah. like the marina area. Yeah, um, it's, it's on the list? The No, 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 the, the national seashore is not on oh, the list. Okay. But the beaches that are on the list with those high bacteria areas, it's because they have a high uh, population of boats. Mm. And I see. boats um, don't aren't properly you know, cleaning out their septic tanks and things like that, releasing Yikes. it into the ocean, which is really dangerous. Yeah, clearly. Um, not good, you know, for people swimming in the beaches and the environment. So be cognizant of that. Yeah, and in Corpus Christi today, the heat index is going to be 115. Oh. Mm. So, yeah, it's going to be hot everywhere across uh, South Central Texas today. Uh, and in fact, over the week, take a look at San Antonio's forecast. I just had to get right to it and cut to the chase because it's going to be gnarly hot outside. Temperatures are going to climb to about 103 by Thursday and Friday. Heat index values this week anywhere from 105 to 110. And by the way, gnarly hot is a proper meteorological term. Okay, as far as the weather setup goes, there are some severe storms working their way through North Texas right now, but these are quickly moving off to the uh, right around the Texarkana area and they will be out. Otherwise, in West Texas, there's a few showers, but this heat high is going to settle overhead in the coming days, and that's also going to not only raise our temperatures, but it's going to keep us very dry. Here's a look at the potential rainfall, not for the next three days, not for the next seven days, but for the next 10 days. And you can see that uh, with the exception of the western tier of the United States, South Central Texas is one of the only dry spots on the map. And that is not good when you consider how uh, areas in our viewing area and in the hill country are 
the worst state for the drought right now of the entire state. In fact, areas from Kerrville down to Bernie in exceptional drought. The worst drought across the state is just in the hill country, and we are not going to be seeing any healthy rain again over the next at least 10 days in San Antonio. So buckle down and get ready for the heat. As you can see outside, we are seeing peaks of sunshine through the clouds already, so we're going to quickly see these clouds give way to sun. It's 80 degrees in San Antonio, and when we take a wider view across South Central Texas, it's totally sunny in Del Rio and Laredo, so these spots are going to be hot because they're starting off without any clouds. Even around San Antonio, already starting to see these clouds break up. It's 78 in Helotus, 78 in Hondo, 81 in New Braunfels, 79 in Canyon Lake. I've started to get in the habit of getting things done earlier in the day because the peak heat of the day is just too hot. And you can see that here in the forecast. In your case, that 12 hour forecast, 85 by 10. Already by noon, we're going to have a heat index of near 100. And then in the afternoon, 101 degrees for the high, feeling closer to 106 in San Antonio. Forecast highs in your neighborhood, 102 in Del Rio, 106 Catula, 102 Pleasanton. You know, it's still going to be hot in the hill country, but because of those higher elevations, able to shave off a few degrees from the high, but it's still going to feel like 102 in Kerrville, feeling like 107 in New Braunfels, 106 in Pleasanton, 106 in Uvalde. Look at Beeville and Catula. Heat index values closer to 110 to 115. So yeah, either way you slice it, it is going to be hot over the next several days. Uh, one thing that I've found is really helpful uh, is my husband and I, we've tried to save money with CPS, so we keep it cool in the evening because I can't really sleep when it's <laughs> I don't know, uh, 80 man. degrees <laughs> in, in there. But but honestly, my, the ceiling fans help a ton, a lot more than I thought they would. So They do. Yeah. All right. What so. do you keep it at during the day? So when we're not there, it's usually around 76. Okay. When you're not there? When we're not there. Oh, my gosh. When I'm there, it's like 78. My yeah. husband's not happy about it, but I was, I was like, gonna we're going to save on our bill. We turn it up. That. He's not thrilled. Yeah. We turn it up to like 80 when we leave. He lives by a fan. Okay. And Again, I hear a lot no. of huffing and <sighs> I have <puffing>. 600 <laughs> square feet. You guys have full homes. Apartment okay. dweller, property owner. Time now, just about 8.51, 81 degrees. We got schooled there. I don't know if you could tell. Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> A new study has found that snakes have a unique behavior similar to one found in humans. So they actually comfort each other when they are stressed. Researchers with the Journal of Frontiers and Ethology studied rattlesnakes in stressful situations and tracked their stress levels. They found that those with companions had lower heart rates compared to those who were alone. Scientists hope this research will help people who want to keep snakes as pets. So no, just get one. You gotta get two. You gotta get two. I'm not getting any. So if you know anybody who's not particularly loving, just tell them that a rattlesnake is more loving than them. Ooh, mm. big <laughs> burn. <laughs> Sure. All right, no pollen count today. <laughs> we don't have a pollen count today, but it will return on Monday. Uh, there was no pollen count yesterday as well. But with trends, you know, molds are probably around, but still low, which is good news. 85 at 10, 92, and mostly sunny at noon. But my friends, it's going to be 101 for the high temperature today. Heat index values anywhere from 105 to 108. At least there will be a breeze from the south. And then take your pick each day the same as before, maybe even a couple of degrees hotter by Thursday and Friday when highs get up to about 103 in San Antonio. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to be staying inside as much as possible and maybe even go to the pool. We'll see what happens. Okay. It's definitely an option. Hey, don't forget that the Spurs Summer League, mm -hmm. they also play again tonight at they 7 do. p.m. And will we see Wemby play again? You think yeah, so? Yeah, we'll see Wemby. We'll see... Champagne it was like, I gotta get you a champagne jersey at this point. Oh, champagne is just fun to say. It is. So is Wemby. Have a great Sunday. Go Spurs, go!